Everybody, welcome from around the globe. We have everyone from Italy, Canada, Indonesia, Mexico, all over the globe. And today we're here to introduce the Prism Mobile Backpack. And with me, as always, is our lovely co host, Tyler Riddle, myself being Derek hey, hey. Nickel, Tyler, and I are here to present this new accessory to the PRISM line of encoders and decoders. Tyler, how are you doing down in Irvine? It's, uh, it's a nice cool one here in, in Portland, actually. It is so hot here. This is, uh, I think it's going to be 100, 105 today. I'm oh, in a wow. nice AC building, so I can't complain. Um, so yeah. I I'm not feeling it, but I feel sorry for those who are uh, not as fortunate and working in hot weather or missing the AC. So yeah, where uh, where's everybody else at? Yeah, where's everybody else at with this? You got some hot weather where you're at? Let everybody know <laughs> this is a live stream. There are about 40 people watching this right now, so there are definitely some viewers that could respond and talking about responding um, I would like to pull up something here uh, that we're we're doing today we want to remind everybody that uh, we will be giving away one node 2 kit to anyone that just enters a comment in chat you don't have to say anything specific in chat but as long as you enter a comment in chat, you will be entered to win this, and we'll send it out to you uh, shortly after this. So, um, hashtag node two. Hashtag node <laughs> two. Right? We're gonna we're gonna start that that trend. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> you're not. You're not about that. <laughs> no, I, I, I can't. We got, I can't do it, man. Marketing traffic, man. Marketing traffic. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I wish. All right. So. <clears throat> to the schedule today, let's look at what we're going to cover. Uh, today's schedule is actually going to go back into the Prism, Prism Mobile a little bit and uh, go over what the Prism Mobile does, why we created it, um, uh, what it includes. Uh, then we're going to go through the 5G, the Node 5G, and, and talk about the, uh, the latest and greatest there. Um, and then dive into the backpack itself and uh, show you what we did with that, why it is what it is, why you need it, why everybody needs it, uh, beyond just the fact that it has a, a lot more modems. Um, we're going to go through that user interface because it's a little bit different uh, since we've added those, those modems. We want to show that off as well. Uh, and then we're going to uh, look at some of the recent uh, firmware releases that include multi-track audio, uh, a video generator and fail, uh, a fallback system, uh, bonded camera to cloud, so sending uh, camera to cloud files, VOD files, up in a bonded manner, so breaking that apart and sending it up. Um, the internal overlay structure that's built into the Prism and the, the 217 release. And then after that, look at uh, 218 and what we're planning to do for those releases coming up here in the future. Um, and of course, we will announce the Node 2 winner at the end of this and then take your questions after that. So stay tuned to ask some questions, see who actually gets that Node 2. And if you do get the Node 2, you're going to have to stay till the end. That's that's the trick. So that's 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 where we get you is is you know, you have to stay till the very end. So what do you, you have anything else? I feel like I'm the only one talking here, Tyler. That's usually no, case, man. So. You're doing great. Yeah. You're doing great. <laughs> All right. well, yeah, no, we're pretty excited about this whole whole thing that's happening. Uh, this backpack really extends the capability. Uh, also, with the Node Five G, which we're going to show you here pretty soon. That's right. Actually, let's let's, let's get, get right, right into, into the it. Prism Mobile. 
All right. So um, the first one we're going to look at here is uh, Prism Mobile. Uh, this has been out since um, quarter one of this year. This is our on camera, camera back, camera mounted uh, field encoder that includes two LTE um, node twos in the device itself. So out of the box, you get a bonded solution, something that you can connect to core, send multiple interfaces up, and ensure that you have that uh, redundancy. So um, it's a 264, 265 ABC, HEVC encoder. It'll encode up to 85 megabits a second if you really want to push it that far. Um, it will do everything from 480 all the way up to 4K DCI, I believe. Am I true in saying that? I believe DCI. And that is, is that is absolutely true. It does go to DCI. So you can computer inputs, video inputs, whatever you need to throw at this thing, it'll it'll crunch it, send it wherever you need to. Um, that includes HDR, 10-bit 422 encoding, uh, and video. Uh, sorry, color representation. Um, and there is t uh, 12G SDI with a loop out on it. So you don't have to break your chain. You don't have to, to this doesn't have to be an end of line workflow sort of situation. You can stick it in the middle of something, loop it in and out. If you already have an encoder, pop it in there, see what it's like. Yeah, I think they have 30 day money back guarantees actually. So you could, Never mind. I'm not going to go there. Uh, <laughs> let's not talk about that. Um, but now it offers uh, multi-channel and multi-track um, audio recording. Uh, like I said, the two 4G internals, and you can add an external 5G or this new backpack plate uh, that that comes with the backpack that we're going to talk about here soon. Um, all of that gets connected through a uh, five-pin locking connector, so that it it can't be uh, tugged out or, or lost or, or fall off at any given point. So um, with that said, you can take nine ISP uh, sources, nine independent sources uh, for internet and bond those together on this single device. So it, it adds a lot of uh, flexibility there as well. Um, it's kind of a, a streaming safety net, uh, I like to call it. Is you get into a bad situation, you always have these these backup plans, right? Right. Yeah, there's options. You can definitely use your uh, iOS or Android device to contribute up to four phones on the Wi-Fi. So basically what happens is all the phones join the Wi-Fi and then using our app, it allows you to share the data over the app. So not a hotspot mode, but what we call a data sharing model. Uh, this is great for areas where you have phone service, but maybe uh, um, you don't have the right plan for modems or something like that. And it also allows people to contribute in a pinch. Or, or so, if your uh, hotel Wi-Fi costs like uh, $3,400 uh, a day, it, it's, a good, it's a good option there. Um, this includes native camera to cloud uh, as well. So you can go directly to Frame.io, uh, Sony C and C3P and PIX. So that's a file upload delivery um, VOD type. Um, it includes USB and SD card recording. The SD card is internal on the device, so you just carry that with you. And if you had a USB drive, a larger drive you want to record to, you can plug that in here as well. Um, and something more recent on the, uh, I think it was 216 or 215, is a video review on the device. So you can play back those video files that you've recorded and make sure that you have all the things that you need, that you thought you've copied. So that's Prism Mobile. Mm -hmm. We uh, went over that pretty quick. So if anybody has any questions, uh, I guess we're going to wait until the end. Or if you want, we can stop here. I'm, I'm getting flagged by no one because we're just we're <laughs> winging it. Uh, let's see. Uh, Digital Studio Peru asked, is Node 5G compatible with Cube 755? Tyler. Uh, so at, I mean, we can hop right into Node 5G, and I'll mm -hmm. answer that question afterwards. Okay. Yeah, so, let's go into Node 5G uh, then, huh? You want to talk about let's that? Let's hop into we'll, it. <laughs> we'll start with the questions. There you go. Let's drive this. Yeah. Thing. Okay. So this is Node 5G, and um, as you can see, it's a four, uh, four antenna solution. It's got a single nano SIM card. It's got a five-pin connector, locking connector here. It keeps everything in place. And this thing is freaking fantastic. The chipset that we used in this 
is uh, something that supports the latest and greatest. It it is something that allows multi upload, or so multi in multi out upload capability. So you get better performance in more congested areas over 5G and LTE. Um, it also has some specialty features uh, that carriers are implementing. Uh, for example, we're talking with T-Mobile right now about implementing some of these features in the modem. So they have some special things for their network and they have special firmware that will work especially with uh, T-Mobile. I'm sure other carriers are doing this as well. Um, we wanna support everybody, of course, and as carriers release new features, this is the future of um, that sort of support. Uh, this also includes a built-in eSIM. So we've removed one of the slots from our standard offering here. Let me get it into the light. You got and, it. It's a nice shot. Uh, let me, yeah, okay. Nice. My camera keeps going up. Yeah, so... Um, what what we've done with this is we put one SIM here and we also have an eSIM that's ready to go for Teradek data. With Teradek data, um, your standard data packages for native carrier, we've got AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile, and you can drop that right onto this, this eSIM and provision it as such. In secret, we are actually working on a triple native carrier SIM. So the ability to switch carriers, that's uh, coming down the pipe, but uh, that will be supported in the future revisions of, of this particular device where uh, through software, we can actually switch on the SIM uh, between carriers. And suddenly it's an actual at t SIM, it's an actual Verizon SIM, and it's an actual um, T-Mobile SIM. This is a, a North American thing, but we are also uh, deploying more and more native carriers throughout the world. I think we've got one in Australia coming, we've got a Canada coming, a Japan coming, and Vodafone across Europe uh, is coming down the pipe. So this solution will be extensible to Teradek data. Um, as you can see, there's tons of uh, uh, 5G support on this, both NSA and um, and standalone networks, so non-standalone and standalone 5G, it supports all of it. So super, super forward-looking on this device. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, it, uh, and it also, it doesn't just uh, only work with prisms and stuff. It works with Linux and Windows machines as well, right? So you can't... It you, does, yeah. All right. So if you needed a hotspot or you needed to have uh, internet wherever you're at, you can you can do that with this device as well. Sure, yeah, we just get you the drivers for it and uh, should be good to go there. Yeah. So, questions. Um, there was a question on the, the, uh, the uh, Cube 755. Uh -huh. So this particular device is requiring a bit of dev to get all of the features put into it. Um, at this time, we are not currently developing on the, the 755 we may be open to it in the future, but at this time, there's not a plan to add support for this device in the 700 series. Um, if somebody were to come in with a large order of these, uh, we, could, we could have the engine time, engineering time to do this, but our future is the PRISM. Uh, we are going full throttle into PRISM. Yeah, agreed. Um, yeah. How this long? will work with the Serve 4K and the Prism Mobile and the actually the Serve Micro as well for your you Cine folks out there. So next question we got: How long will the battery last on the new Prism backpack? Sounds like we need to dive into the backpack. Well, okay, we'll we'll wait for backpack <laughs> questions. Whatever, we, we yeah. got other questions here. Uh, Video return is nice. Why is the SD card only internal? Raphael Rosenhagen. Why is the SD card only internal? Why do you not have an SD card slot? No, we do. That's that's what I meant by internal. It's it's mounted in the unit itself. It's an SD card slot, so it carries it internally in the device. It's not a true internal. It's a removable, if if that clarifies a bit better. 
Main difference between Surf 4K and Prism Mobile. Surf 4K is hampered. It is. So Quite a bit. Surf, Surf yeah. 4K is, uh, the functionality is turned down a bit for a specific need. Uh, Prism Mobile has all of the options available, including SRT, uh, delivery, uh, RTSP. It uses a lot of different protocols. It has a lot of different options, all of the options that we're, we're building into it, where Surf 4K will have specific options tailored to cinema. And, and that's yeah. kind of where that's going to stop. So, and what you, what you'll see is as the Cine team uh, releases certain features for their up and coming um, Teradek TV, you will see the Surf 4K go in a Cine direction uh, for for camera to cloud. So it'll be very limited as to what you can actually do with the unit. It'll be geared towards um, the cinema. Uh, use case. Whereas the Prism side, you can do everything that Serve 4K can do, plus all the updates, all the things that um, everything that we develop for Prism gets put into the Prism Mobile, the Prism Flex, and the Prism RU. Right. Um, does the USB C port provide a connection to a laptop? Um, I believe this is on the Prism Flex. The Prism Flex has a USB C port but it is not a laptop connector port. It does not uh, connect as a webcam or a storage source or anything like that. It is primarily used for USB uh, drives and uh, the Node 2 and Node 5G modems. So you can actually attach one of the 5G modems to a Flex if you had a desktop uh, delivery or workflow that you needed to have uh, bonded cellular added to it. Does it, the F Node 5G support eUICC cards? So uh, the Node 5G is an, or Teradect data is an eUICC card, but it's built in on plastic. Additionally, the eSIM inside is an eUICC card, but it's locked to Teradect data. Um, you can use third party. So if you have a data solution or something like that, you can plug in third party uh, SIMs into the plastic SIM card slot. They work great. And we and we'll get into this on, in terms of modems a little later. But uh, we've done a lot of improvements in terms of modem configurability. We found many countries have a lot of different configurations. So when you're building a universal device like this, uh, you need the ability to uh, either template or have all of the stuff available for that particular carrier. There's a couple more questions around SD cards. Uh, what's the largest SD size it can handle and the card specs for the best performance? Um, these are running, what, class 10, I believe it is, um, and 128, 256. So I've run both sizes up to that size in there so uh anything from 16 gig on up i would i don't I would... think there's a limit per se i right. mean this is a this is a linux os so i mean that the cards are formatted as expat mm -hmm. so you can throw in a any sort of sd card in there it's not like it was with the cubes and and before where it was particular um we haven't run into a whole lot of cards that don't work. I'm sure there are some out there. Um, happy to test whatever you'd like to test, but in our tests across standard brands, they all seem to work. They all seem to perform fine. In addition, um, because video streams are compressed, we're not moving hundreds of megabits uh, across here. You're, you're talking uh, uh, 50 megabits, which, mm -hmm. or, eight megabits or whatever your stream's at or whatever you're recording at. Uh, so most class 10, everything that's sold today pretty much supports it. Yep. Um, and to, let's see, what is the SD card recording resolution? So the recording resolution and bit rate will be what is set on the Prism encoder itself. So what that means is if you are doing a camera to cloud workflow where you're not actually streaming to core or anywhere else or a destination, it will record it at a constant or variable bit rate depending on what you set it at. Uh, and that can be set for all the way from 
oh, what was it, the lowest we got 320 K or something a second to yeah. uh, 85 megabits a second. So you wide, wide scale there. Um, if you were streaming and you're do, doing some adaptive bitrate streaming from the device directly, it will record that streamed file, not a uh, constant bitrate file. So it adapts, and as it adapts, it records that file to the SD card. But it's the same bitrate, same resolution um, that you would set your stream to. It's going to record that into the SD card and with Camera to Cloud upload that into your cloud preference. Well, I think we should move on to the main thing of this event, and yeah. let's talk about the backpack, and we'll get back to these questions. Let's talk about the backpack. And Tyler, I'm going to let you intro this backpack, because this is your baby. All right. So the Prism Mobile backpack uh, is essentially a cradle system for the Prism Mobile. Um, it allows a the, the Prism Mobile to be extended across multiple modems. It includes a bonding module inside of it and then connections to all the modems. And I'll show you what that looks like here in just a minute. Uh, but the Prism Mobile backpack allows you to utilize the Prism Mobile by itself by just removing it and utilizing it in the backpack when you need a little more oomph. So you can still have the compact nature of the Prism Mobile, but you use it in a backpack situation. So. Let me disconnect this from Ethernet and let me move this over and plug in this modem that I pulled out. Great. All right. So let's take a look at what are the elements of this backpack. It uses, utilizes a traditional um, Teradek backpack. And what we did is we kind of reworked the backpack a bit to support all the modems and provide a bonding module. Um, the battery goes actually on top of the Prism Mobile and the bonding module's on the bottom. So this battery actually powers all the modems and you, you can see there's, there's uh, two more there. It works with Node 5G and Node 2. What's the benefit and, of Node 5G and, and, and Node 2 uh, simultaneously? Sure. So, so because these are actually Node 2s, um, they run at LTE, and then these are 5Gs. They'll run at 5G or, or whatever the carrier gives at that time. But you can actually combine your LTE frequencies with your 5G frequencies. Uh, this is really important. If, if you guys are cell nerds like I am, you'll know that sometimes things get congested on 5G because all the iPhones and all the Android phones are connecting to that, yet... When I switch over to LTE, boom, everything loads. Um, so I've run into situations like this um, on all carriers where you're running into congestion on a certain band, whereas a less populated band like LTE um, and the various bands that LTE supports are not congested. So it's a nice little uh, one-two here supporting all of those uh, technologies in one bag. Yep. Um, you can, if, if you're looking for an LTE solution, you can buy this bag. It comes in, uh, it comes empty. It comes with two modems, two LTE modems, node two, or two 5G modems, or a total of four 5G modems. And so those are the standard configurations we run out. Those of you who have Prism Mobiles, uh, what you can do with that is buy the empty backpack from us. You get all the cabling. All of this comes, you just set your Prism Mobile in, and then you put your battery on top, and you are good to go. And it's and it's scalable as you want it to be. If you need something where you just need the mobile and you can pull it out and use the mobile, and then put it back in here. Use, use this as a, a two-modem solution for the weekend for some event that you need to do, and then... When you have something at the next week, add the rest of the, the modems to it. Buy this in chunks, too, if you can't get the whole thing. So just just talking price, we're looking at what? For for what you have in front of you right now it's, is sub-10 grand. Is, this is sub-10K. Yeah, right. definitely sub-10K for this so for MSRP. If you, if you can't get to there. Up or scales yeah. down from there. Right. If you can't get to there right away, you can start with the mobile and build this thing up as you need it. 
So it's it's extremely flexible. We wanted to make this as flexible as possible for everybody, so that you know you don't you don't have to bite off the big chunk. You can bite in little chunks and have a very nice system at the end of the day that's supporting you. So, is there anything so, else you wanted um, to show there? There was there was another thing in here, and this particular backpack doesn't have it, but we actually have a fan system as well. I know some people have said, "Hey, your products are hot." Yes, they're hot. Well, there's but, there's been a couple uh, of questions about the Texas heat yeah. as well. So yeah, know. the Texas heat. And we're That's actually a... sending a bag out to Texas here pretty soon. And one of the things that stopped me from shipping it out there was I wanted to make sure that our cooling system was uh, good to go. So this has a fan built into the top of it. It can be undone and removed. It's pretty quiet. We're we're pretty impressed with what we've come up with. Uh, and what is and, what does this whole thing weigh? All yeah. said and done, uh, with like a 90 watt hour on it. With a 90 watt, I, I, you know, honestly, I don't know. I have not put that on a scale. Okay. So uh, let's see. Let's let's. I don't know. Ten pounds. Ten Something pounds. Something like that. Maybe 15. Mostly the battery. Mostly, right. <laughs> so whatever right. the battery you put on there is, that's the weight it's going to be. Uh, but we can certainly get those specs for you. Uh, this launch is September 14th as well. So um, we're putting it through its paces in Europe, its paces in Brazil. Um, we have a couple bags running around uh, the US here and uh, just trying to work through all of these things to make it the most bulletproof solution we've ever come up with. And we, and we need uh, people like you guys that are watching to, to help us test that. So if you are mm -hmm. interested in beta testing, if you are interested in running this thing through the ringer we need we need people i i'm stuck in this purple room in portland and you know i can only test so much stuff but uh working with everybody here and everybody that's interested it, it would be great to to have that feedback um how how long does a battery last i know i have uh, a couple prism mobiles here and just the prism mobile itself on a 90 watt hour will last about three and a half to four hours and that's using both modems um, and streaming probably six and a half, eight megs, somewhere around there. Um, what, is the, what does the backpack look like? Obviously, there's going to be, you know, four additional. Yeah, there's a higher draw modems. depending, yeah, depending on which modems you have and which modems you pull. Uh, on our spec sheet, we have a... There it is. Okay, so the, the pull on that officially was, I believe, uh, 77 watts max. So if everything was running 100% and you were pushing the bag 85 megabits per second and um, everything was plugged in and recording all ports, on the SD card, yeah. Yeah, everything is happening. Um, we've, we've, set at 77 watts are practically speaking it's about 30 watts so it's about well, half of that and this and this has a shore power option too right you don't have to run oh, it off yeah, the battery man. so what what else does that shore power option do for you when you so plug it in this yeah yeah this shore power option uses ptap so uh whether you're using v-lock or a b mount you can plug this in on the ptap and it will actually charge the battery for you. So, so if you need to just drop the bag, plug it in, do some work, it will charge the bag while you're while it's powering the bag for you. So it's, it switches over, and uh, then it just allows you to uh, unplug it and dynamically just go. And so this there's is, no drop in signal there. Yeah, this is seamless. It won't break the, it's not going to shut it down. It's not going to reboot it or anything. It'll be a seamless power, uh, shore power to uh, walk around uh, if you needed to drop it and charge it. So makes and it a lot. And if some of you needed, yeah, if some of you needed um, a solution with multiple batteries or something like that, you can actually go through that port as well. Um, so you guys can all get creative with how you power the bag. So, some more questions around recording. Here comes recording on the card. Could the back end operator in the cloud turn recording on and off? You can enable and disable recording. Right now, we are adding the function to 
start and stop records as well as um, determine which camera to cloud folder in core it actually sends to and, and will sync to. So uh, as an operator in the cloud, you can specify where your files get dropped into and have a bit more uh, control over that, that end device. We're doing some huge improvements with camera to cloud um, in 218. It's not something we actually mentioned here, but we are improving the way that the the files get to the cloud, the order at which they get to the cloud, and, and that sort of thing. So all of that is is going to provide an excellent experience for our customers. Um, is the second SDI port for loopout? Yes, it is. Um, right now, it's set up for a loopout. Um, we're exploring what we can do with that uh, port because it's not fixed as a loopout. It can be switched and, and operated uh, if it's programmed as such. So. Uh, we're, we're looking at options there. Um, should we keep Thanks, going? Man. We just have a, we have a bunch of questions yeah. and we have uh, sure, Q&A yeah. scheduled at the end of this so we can get all of this stuff. So we will be getting to all of your questions here shortly, but we want to I, I see this one here, here talking yeah, about can. video audio clocking feature. Mm -hmm. um, so with a Bond backpack, the sync tends to start drifting. Uh, talk to our support on that one. Uh, it shouldn't it shouldn't be drifting there, but I can tell you that the Prism is uh, it's it's a totally different chipset and a different way of doing things, and the the sync is right on. Especially in 217, we've done some major improvements, especially in the RTMP area, um, that improve the sync drastically. Like it is it is rock solid in 217. It is. So, should we? Oh. Uh, do you want to? You want to keep answering questions, or should we move on to uh, what we've just released? Yeah, let's move on. Okay. Um, unfortunately, my remote camera or my remote system is not cooperating with me, so I will go over. The features, the, the main features that uh, we released on 217, which uh, came out two weeks ago now, uh, Thursday. Mm -hmm. uh, the first of which is multi-track audio. So this has been an ask for a very long time. Um, what this enables is the user to create uh, multiple tracks of AAC audio. That could be either 5.1, stereo, mono, um, and then mix of which input tracks from the video input you actually want to uh, put onto those output tracks. So that itself um, uh, is, is an ask for a very long time. And uh, we can now, as of 217, two weeks ago, we are able to do that. Uh, this is perfect for multilingual delivery. So if you have speakers in other languages coming in on, on other channels, you can switch those to the main channels and, and deliver that uh, RTMP, SRT, uh, or to another decoder or in the core. Um, what we also have is a video generator uh, that was released for either test, uh, to, to generate a test pattern for troubleshooting. So say you don't have a camera input, but you want to fax out your entire workflow. From the encoder, you can actually generate a test pattern and tone and send that as an encoded source out of the encoder. So um, if you wanted to hook up your decoders, you can make sure that that throughput is, is going. What this also does too, and what was built into it, was a, a fallback system. So say uh, HDMI or SDI gets unplugged, while you are uh, transmitting, it will automatically fall over to either a slate uh, that you can upload a black screen or the bars and tone, and that will keep your stream up and going and it will not disconnect your stream. Um, the next one is the internal overlay. So the internal overlay, overlay is something that has been in Prism for quite a while, um, but we've made some adjustments to that, including a uh, edit feature while it's inactive so you don't have to activate the overlay if you're if you're working on something uh, that's live you can edit that bug or add things to the overlay and then activate that later 
What it also does too, what we've included is a frame grab. So if you have a presenter where you need to attach lower thirds or have some sort of bug that's out of the way, you can grab that live frame and make sure that it's uh, positioned correctly. Um, we did a lot of bug improvements, mostly around modems. We had a lot of testing go on in the last several months where uh, we've just beating the heck out of the modems that we put in this thing and uh, have made a lot of improvements there. Um, and then the final one is the bonded camera to cloud proxies uh, for, for proxy uploads. Um, this increases upload speed by breaking the file apart and using each bond uh, point on the device to send that file to either Frame.io, Sony C, or C3P. Those are the, the native systems that we have installed on the device that are working with this bonded file upload right now, but this increases your file upload capabilities, speed, performance, all of that. And I have a slide just to kind of show how that actually works coming from camera broken in over the, the, tool, the two LTE internal and then uploaded into Frame.io, Sony C or C3P. Um, so that was just a quick overview of what we had just released for 2.17. Um, and Tyler would love to tell you what we're planning. <laughs> I for love telling secrets. You do love telling secrets, man. <laughs> like, yes, sir. You get us in trouble one of these times okay. here. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go through these quickly. Not a whole ton of questions on them because there's some things we need to be tight lipped about. Uh, but we are building. Teradek bonding direct on the decoders. This will come with as a licensed upgrade. Uh, this will allow you to take it off core if you need to, where you will also allow it to work with core to, um, as a monitoring tool. But your, your video essentially will come through the decoder and it will allow you to stream to one additional channel on there. Um, additionally, this will be extended to our on-premise Hyperion through a dedicated Hyperion card. But all decoders will get this ability, and this includes the RU models, the um, Prism Flex decoders, and I guess that's all the decoders. Uh, next, uh, you can track your, st your stats on the device on this, and basically, if you already have infrastructure in place, uh, this is great for news crews and that sort of thing that want dedicated devices on-prem, but want it to be quite simple. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, another thing we're working on is the is core share. And this is real-time communications, or IFB. It's better than our IFB solution before. And uh, this will actually work with the what's now known as core TV as, as the audio chat between devices. So. Uh, this will be rebranded as Core Share, and it will be more and more focused on live production and use cases. Next up, um, modem resiliency. We have done a heck of a ton of uh, work on this uh, in different countries, specifically Brazil. Uh, we've got some in the UK, and we've basically brought all of these options to light. Uh, when you're entering a country or some place where we don't have presets built into the modem, so for example, in the U.S., uh, we've got AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon built right in, but sometimes companies aren't certified with the modem in terms of dedicated profiles, or they just don't need a dedicated profile for the carrier. Um, in this particular case, we have been beating these modems up, bringing all of the settings to light, and making changes in our back end that allow better connectivity um, in, in different countries. And if you can't get connected or you need an adjustment or need to add APN, we can continue to add those. Uh, for example, I ran into something in Australia where, where Telstra had actually changed their APN and the default APN that was being applied was the, uh, the, a the old APN. So something that got fixed was the fact that uh, they're putting in a new APN for this. 
So little things like that to help make the, the experience for our users as seamless as possible and as automated as possible. Well, and provide um, some useless, useless, useful feedback instead of the useless feedback. Get, get some more data right, in there. Right, yeah. You know? Yeah. So right. we've got, uh, well, one more thing I want to say about that. Um, uh, we've got management tools for all of those things, including uh, 464XLAT, which is an IPv4 to v6 translation layer. And we can activate those on a whim in 218 uh, as needed per carrier. Uh, 219, little hint, hint. Uh, we're looking at band locking and tower management settings so uh, that you can avoid the close towers and maybe go for the further towers that might be less congested. Nice, nice. Moving on. Continue on. Yeah. Um, we've got multiple overlays coming in for 218. Uh, this will allow you to cut between overlays as well. So if you want to uh, use this as, as a lower thirds or something like that, you can do that. We just find it to be a useful tool for all of our live production. It was an ask from one of our big customers, and we're putting it in for 218. We also have TGA file support. So for you broadcasters that are in that environment, uh, you can pull those files in and, and utilize them in the overlays. Continue on. You want to talk here's about the, this, Derek? Here's, here's, the big, here's the big one, is low latency. Um, we have been working, I don't know how deep we should go, but I'm going to try and stay high level. <laughs> We've yeah. been working on our own uh, low latency protocol uh, to replace our existing encode decode stack. And low latency pipeline. 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 Yeah, yeah. Sorry, pipeline is the true word. Um, better get on the bandwagon. So this is improving our uh, reliability and latency uh, within that that pipeline. And so far, with what Tyler and I've tested over the last couple days, we're looking less than 100 milliseconds over WAN. That's what we were at essentially the other day, but we're shooting for 100 to 150 milliseconds over WAN. And so far, we've, we've hit that number. So um, this is taking uh, standard IP and encoding it, sending it uh, over com community, uh, sorry, what am I trying to say? Not commercial networks, but consumer grade networks um, and you can actually have real-time communication between an encoder and a decoder now uh, with not even in NDI or any other WebRTC yeah. Yeah, sort of protocol. So we're not using WebRTC, we're not using anything like that. This is our own standard protocol that we're, we're developing. So you want to add anything there? Uh, I think we'll leave it at that for secrets? now, but but you will see you will see improvements in SRT and MPEG TS standard protocols that we have. You'll see lower latency there. Um, our AirMix protocol, which is used in the apps, you'll see lower latency, and um, and it will even affect the I believe the bonding protocol. Uh, it'll just be a more efficient way of doing encoding. Yeah. So it's almost that time uh, we are going to spin the uh, the random winner wheel on the back end and see what's up there. Uh, while we do that, let's answer some more of these questions. So we have some. Uh, oh man! <laughs> what what brand of modem are we using? Uh, and you're the you're the LTE. Well, you're the cell nerd, I think. Now, I think you've been dubbed. Uh, yes. So, nerd. you're. Are you asking about the chipset? There's there's a question. Which brand of modem are we using? And um, if you want to dive into what and why, um, that would be great. <laughs> well, some of those. I mean, we do include the the um, modem spec on on the spec sheet. So um, we we do use two. We are using two different types of modems. Mm -hmm. um, and there will be a, a future use case for, sorry, two brands of modems, there will be a future use case that utilizes uh, the other brand. Mm -hmm. So we have a mix and match. The Node 5G is, is uh, based on the Quectel modules. The Node 2s are also based on the Quectel modules. We do 
have something cam coming down the pipe that will be based on a Sierra wireless module as well. So what we do is we apply some secret sauce to those modules and, and bring a lot of the settings out and make them easy to use. Um, it allows us to also have close relationships with these manufacturers and with the, for example, T-Mobile. Uh, they are utilizing this Quectel module, the 5G one, with tremendous success. And they, they are absolutely thrilled with the capability of this thing. Nice. Let's uh, pick one more. <laughs> Can we have intercom? That's a, that's a good segue into core share that we missed. But core share is that function. So within core share and the and what we're designing for uh, um, 218, you will be able to use either a three and a half mil analog headset, so an earbud with microphone, TRRS uh, hookup, or a USB headset with a mute button even um, and connect that to the prism mobile or the prism flex so uh, ifb and a talkback system is in place uh, as of 218 this next push in september 14th and you'll be able to talk to anybody that's within that channel whether it be your director your operator um, engineers, whoever you want to dump into there, it works on the iPhone. It also works on um, the iPad, uh, Windows, and iOS platforms as well. So it's very extensible uh, to all of your, and Android, sorry, not an Android user here, but uh, <laughs> um, it's very extensible to all of your devices so that you can maximize that efficiency in your control room. So yes, you can has intercom. 100%. Okay, and there was one here. Can I add, this is way back, mm -hmm. can I add cell bonding to the Prism RU? Um, so with the Prism RU, it bonds over two Ethernets uh, that are there. So you can add cellular, but not directly. Um, it would have to have a routing interface of some sort. We're looking at that, but the, the use for that has been somewhat limited because uh, most people that would like to do multiples would do just the, the flex unit. Mm -hmm. um, there have been some users that want to bond the whole thing. At this point, the hardware doesn't have any USB inputs on it to support those particular modems. Yeah. <clears throat> but right. you can bond on it. You yes. can bond on it, yes. Yes, you can. Yes. Let's keep working, working down the list till we get past uh, Butters here. Um, what surprises does the Prism Mobile have for us later? Well, we went over <laughs> some of those with the 218. Um, but what we can say about ART and NDI is um, with we're, we're evaluating ART still. Um, that's still a question of whether or not we implement that or not. NDI, um, we've pretty much signed off and said we're not going to be uh, providing NDI on our devices. Uh, just the way that it's structured is is um, not well. Okay. Extremely <laughs> There's beneficial. <new> information. <laughs> what do you mean? There's new so information. So there there may or may not be. We're always in talks with with well, of course, uh, people. Yeah, yeah. Forth. I'm just so the last thing I heard. Tyler might know something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So go ahead. There may or may not be opportunities with NDI. There's just a license structure that that doesn't necessarily work for how we sell things. Um, so we're and I'm just being quite transparent here. We, we want to work with them in such a way that uh, it works for both companies. And I, I think there's opportunity here, um, but we need to understand the financial ramifications for that and then as well as will it be an increase of sales so it's so purely a business this decision time, for us right yeah at this time at this I'll time say, it's not <laughs> at this time if i can rewind sure sure moving on availability okay. in canada of course availability of cell providers Wait. in canada we've tested with who rogers so, so we actually have tier one data um, in Canada for Rogers and uh, Bell. 
and this is directly integrated with the Prism in terms of APNs and configurations and all of that. So it's ready to go. We're, we're actually doing a big push with one of our sales guys who represents Canada, uh, Jefferson Pichente. And um, we, we have some aggressive pricing on the data for you to, to do a big push in Canada here. So we're really trying to, to get those two carriers out and get Canadians uh, working on really high quality networks for the, their uploads and their streaming. So is it about that time? Should we announce the winner? Let's see. Uh, I ah, think it's that yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah, you, it is that you time. can have the honor. Yeah. <laughs> so the winner, thank you everybody for being here today. I just want to say it's great to see uh, so much traffic, so many questions. Please keep sending the questions in. Um, and the winner of the Node 2 kit is Raphael Rosenhagen. If you can, please send us an email with your delivery address. And don't everybody do this, please. But send this, because I know, like everybody's going to be like, oh, I want one too, and just send it to live at teradeck.com. But Raphael, if you could send your delivery address, we will scrutinize the email address that it comes from, make sure that it gets to you and not my cousin who's also watching. But uh, thank you, everybody, for, for being here. Um, and we're going to continue on with answering your questions. Yeah, um, there's with a some ton more. here. Q&A, but Raphael, thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy that. If you have any issues, obviously reach out to us, because we will be here for you. So keep, keeping it on, moving down the list here. LSR I think we hopped the, um, the main usage for a single camera shoot with a single Node 2 and a single camera shoot with a single Node 5G. What's um, the use case? The... Yeah, so if you're doing a single camera shoot with a single modem, it will just upload on that modem. So you can enable it and disable it if you have both. Um, but either way, we just treat them as connections. The Node 5G has a lot of awesome functions in it uh, in terms of 5G capabilities, and it also supports the 4G capabilities as well. The Node 2 is a very capable uploading modem, which um, is quite compatible with, say, Verizon and, and that sort of thing. So um, it, it's something where you can use either of them, and they're going to work pretty well for you. Yeah, we just uh, did some testing in uh, another Eastern European country over the last several weeks with just the single Node to modem and file upload. And it yeah. Worked perfect. Great. Send in, yeah, send yeah. in files all day. Um, it says, the, how does the signal look like with the antennas being inside the bag? The bag is cloth. So uh, it passes right through it, just like your cell phone passes right through the cloth in your pants. Or your backpack. Um, or you have in your pocket. Else. Or your backpack. Yeah. Or, yeah. So it, it, there's no things inside of there that are going to block those signals. We also have antennas that are small and large, and you can use the both of those inside of the backpack, whether you want the, the stubby ones or the large ones. Mm -hmm. And just a note on that, the large ones actually have a little more frequency use. So on the 5G, if you are in a place that supports C-band or something like that, that is like three gigahertz, and above, these are some specialty networks that don't penetrate very far. But if you're in that environment, um, utilize the big antennas and uh, you'll be able to catch those bands. The small ones tend to cap off at typical frequencies like 2.5. They'll, they'll support like T-Mobile's 2.5 gigahertz. But, and then they'll support 5G all the way down from there. So, but they are far more convenient in terms of um, just having them. They're not so big. Unless you want big, then you can just right. put the big ones put on. Put the big ones on. Yeah. Um, so the Ray Dome question. We haven't really talked about a Ray Dome, but each one of those antennas has four, or each one of those modems has four antennas. And so it, does, yeah. it would be a, a pretty hefty lift to try and wedge those into something like that. But we can definitely check it, it out. It, I mean, it's possible. Like, if it makes financial sense, like, if, we, if we're going to 
sell a bunch of these, then, then great. Um, if the market leads us to that, then wonderful. At this point, I don't think we're looking at anything like Ray Dome. However, all of that being said, we do have the bonding module technology uh, and we do have all the modems. It would just be a matter of putting them into a, a format that fits. Um, but like everything these days, you have to pick and choose uh, what you can do. Right. So not at this time. If, if you're somebody who's going to buy 100 of them, come talk to us. <laughs> Give us a call. Yeah, yeah. We'll see what if, we can do. If we have a market for it, we will build it. Is it possible to connect two cameras? Um, not the, yet. Not yet. The, <laughs> the Prism has, is a single input only, um, so it would just be one. You'd have to connect them upstream from that. So uh, I, yeah. I just, I just want to add something to that, just to be transparent on our future and the future of Prism. Um, we have built Prism to allow multiple inputs on the SDI. All of the Prisms can support it. Software-wise, it doesn't support it right now, um, and, it, and then some development needs to be done. But that is on our roadmap to have multiple inputs into the prism. So when you invest in the hardware now, um, you're you're buying all of this capability for the future. Do you have an app to uh, control let's... it from your hand while you have it on your back? Absolutely. Yes, we do. Yes, we have two apps, actually. So one is, uh, well, do you want to talk about this? I keep talking. No, you're good, man. Go for it. This All is, right. uh, Great. you've been spearheading this backpack project, so <laughs> have at it. So, yeah, yeah. So we have the Prism app. Already works. You can download it right now. It includes uh, configuration support for the uh, module and everything else. So it's really just an extension of that. We also have the core app where you can go and configure the backpack remotely and then see how your core stream's doing and all of that. Um, if that's something, I had an idea and I really haven't passed this through, but I want an Apple Watch app. Um, so as soon as engineering resources are available, I'm gonna request an Apple Watch app so I can just look at my stop, watch. And, stop and start uh, recording from here. Yeah, I just, I just wanna see what's happening. That's yeah, all. yeah. So we got Sounds we like have lots of plan. ideas here. Yeah, um, I, know, I know our boss is like it. losing his mind while we're like shooting stuff to the entire <laughs> world right now. But it's right. It's <laughs> Can Node sure, twos be used things. in the Prism Mobile? One in the USB A port and the second one in the five pin. No, not right now, unfortunately. The uh, the power requirements that it takes to run both of those things will actually um, affect the prism mobile itself so right now it's not enabled and tyler's smiling on the other end it's, do you know something it, i don't okay know. your mileage may vary it, it i'm it's gonna not tell recommended. you right now it's not recommended whatsoever because the minute one of those those ports peaks what happens is the port will will shut off there's just not enough power in the unit itself to run both of those at right. once and, and when you're dealing side. with modems it's a variable power requirement um so this is why we built the bonding module now does it work yeah i mean you can plug it in we don't stop it from working but would we ever recommend it no. absolutely not not at all so yeah. please please don't <laughs> the backpack has the backpack a fan inside yes uh, what Tyler was was talking about is there's uh, an additional piece that's being engineered uh, right now, and it's not included in the backpack that he has, but it's a dual fan intake at the top that will keep this backpack nice and cool. Can you add an ex antenna extension to Prism Mobile? Yes. I don't see why not. Yeah, well, the nodes specifically, I think mm -hmm. we're... Or are you talking about Wi-Fi? Either well, way, RPSMA you can a, to a, a higher gain yeah. antenna, you can always attach, you know, those. And again, your mileage may vary once you start adjusting <laughs> how the product is actually used, but it's not going to hurt anything. So, so here's what we've found on this. If so, we have a a particular company that does race car monitoring with our devices, and they use third-party antennas to plug into the nodes. Um, 
what what will happen on some of the the other devices if if you have a short or something in there what will happen is the antenna power will peak and that's no good we don't want that so if you're going to design for this just make sure you test it out and make sure that your antenna power is uh, proper because otherwise the modem will just uh, turn off until you you reboot the unit so just keep that in mind if you're adding third-party modems in it and you should be good mm -hmm. will it be available, will be available in, mexico? in mexico worldwide yes worldwide everywhere everybody can absolutely know. how and when will the beta testing begin i would love to test this in the unpredictable chicago elements Chicago does have some unpredictable elements, that's for sure. Um, get a hold of us. We'll set up a beta and we'll time it out just as uh, availability is. We we need people to, like I said, we need people to test this. So reach out. Uh, the email is live at teradec.com and it'll hit all of us. Yeah, but you can't ask for a node. You can't ask for a node, right? The, the node was <laughs> Raphael's and that's it. Yeah. yeah. Um, what about the need to replace the batteries on the fly? With the so backpack? at this time we did not build because the Prism um, Mobile does not have a built-in battery to it because it's usually designed to be in line with the battery. Uh, if you want to replace things on the fly, you could plug in a battery into the PTAP of the Prism Mobile and then switch it out. That would be the way to do it. Um, and that's really where the flexibility comes in. You, you can design the solution for that because we did not build an internal battery into the device on this, this round. Right. And adding dual plates into a backpack is not going to be great for weight. So we we're thinking about that too. <laughs> uh, does the battery pack, uh, backpack zip up when the battery is attached to the Prism Mobile? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, what, what we did is we shrunk and embedded the Prism Mobile in it. So here, let me let me just let me zip it up here. Yeah, do you have a, I'll take your full screen here so you can show everybody. Yeah, so this is what it looks like in here. And so it line, it locks in. Let's see if I can zoom now. So that's where the, that's where that fan yeah. duct will go in is at the top there, right? right. So we designed a fan duct for here right here and all the air then any hot air that's that's made by the encoder goes out into this area right here and it just comes out the side it's pretty effective it works well it pulls air through here so and you have in a terms of waterproof right yeah. yeah yeah there's yeah, a battery so on it's all there. zipped up it's running cool i'm sure right. if you've got like a huge huge battery uh, oh. You might run into some space issues, but right, that's up to you, man. Put yeah, one forties on it or something like that. <laughs> the nodes can be used. He said the nodes can be used as a hotspot. Can the backpack be used as a hotspot as well? So the the backpack and the Prism Mobile, which is driving the backpack, does not have a tethered mode right now or a data bonding mode on it. So the mo so the Prism or the, the node 5G can be plugged into a computer and used as a hotspot in that way only. Um, currently, it's not able to, to happen on the prism itself as a data bond, but we're thinking about it. Actually, it's on the roadmap. So we, well, we've got data bridging it. coming. Yeah. yeah, we're thinking about it. Same, same hardware. Mm -hmm. So th that's the beauty of this is uh, it grows. Yep, it's just a firmware update, and now you have more features. I would love for you to make some shortcut presets with different configurations depending on recurring needs. Oh, hey. So we do have presets that is on the roadmap as well, um, where you can set up presets within the device and call up those presets as needed. Actually, so if that, you have yeah. you know, uh, recurring events or anything like that, you can set this up as a recurring event and then pull it up and you have all your stats. All, everything's ready to go. That'll actually be released in 2.18 as well. So uh, that was another one of the features. You can actually make channels um, on there, so the channels that you want to stream that on. And maybe that's not what you mean in terms of 
streaming out on channels. Maybe you're talking about presets for the whole backpack. Um, we would love to talk to you about that and get some input in terms of what you actually mean, because it could be that there's 100 or 200 customers that want the same feature you want. So mm -hmm. again, email us at live at teradec.com. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Let's see. I know it's been asked before, but if AV1 continues to grow, will the Prism be able to support AV1 via software update? If we so, decide to implement it? I think so. Say again? I don't think so. I'm, I'm not sure if our codec supports that. Okay. Well, we can do some research and get back to you. This was... Yeah. Uh, LSRTV, and I'll save that one. What else do we got? Will they integrate the SIM card data for Latin America and Peru? Teradec data yes. in Peru? Yes, go. it's coming. Nice. Okay, so uh, we have a deal coming down the pipe here with our backend provider that is going to allow uh, direct on AMT networks or Amer American Mobile which owns all the Claro, the Telcells, all of that across Latin America. And so this SIM will allow you to then go to all of these countries and it will work on the native carrier itself. So not an MVNO, but an actual native yeah, carrier. Yes. Nice. <laughs> so we went over the chipsets and what we use. To pick the yeah, winner. so, yeah. yes, did that. Other than the low, other things. newer, lower price, why should you buy the pr previous Bond backpack versus the new 5G backpack? Will this be replacing the previous Bond backpack then, Tyler? We've already EOL'd the previous Bond backpack. Um, if you can get them, they're all on the used market right now. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it. Prism is our future, the Cube and the Bond 700 is our past. So all new features, uh, all of the development we're doing is primarily focused on Prism at this point. Mm -hmm. So if you wanna use some of the old stuff, hey, great, like have at it, the bonding protocol, we're, we're gonna to continue to support these backpacks in terms of their um, original functionality. Um, if that makes your workflow great, lovely. Um, but if you want the latest and greatest, if you want the ability to go 4K, if you want the ability to support 5G, um, it, it's Prism all the way. Yep. That's where the future growth is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, so will there be a 3.5 mil and USB-C port for IFB and the Prism backpack? There will be a 3.5 mil and a USB-A for IFB. So yes, you will be able to use the backpack as a communication device as well if you have a hard <clears throat> if you have a hard request for uh USB C and you're buying a couple of these we can actually make a conversion cable for you if, you, if you're desperate for it mm -hmm. but i think right. you you should be able to convert that in pretty easily yeah let's see i'm looking for a run and gun mobile setup for my vehicle that I could use to live stream on YouTube in 1080p, what would you recommend? I would recommend a Prism Mobile backpack. Because <laughs> that's where we're at. There you go. Right? Well, I mean, if they're doing run and gun, like camera backed, <laughs> then Prism Mobile, yeah. Prism Mobile, if but you if... need something that's camera back, but yeah. Right. Run and gun, you usually have a at least a backpack with a you. Guy. Or you, somebody helping you. Have you have a, a back to put that pack on. Right, right. <laughs> human tripod right any plan for a date for multiple inputs on prism mobile uh, no date at this time we're identifying a bunch of different things right now to to lead into that so when that comes out we will definitely let everybody know mm -hmm. and can you control the fan speed no not at this time um, it is set to maximize the cooling of the unit um, and it is very low noise uh, they did some testing uh, down in Irvine to make sure that the fans themselves were not loud or obnoxious or anything so um, it's set to cool the unit and it's set to do that in the maximum efficiency possible so 
Uh, one thing about that, just as a note, if you are in an environment where you need a completely silent backpack, and that means no fans at all, like a, a very noise sensitive environment, like a studio or something like that, and you need the backpack in with the mics, um, just open it up and unplug the fan. Uh, as simple as that, it, we, we, we have the ability to do that in the backpack. And for those particular things, the backpack doesn't overheat because it's, it's um, actually never overheated, but it, the backpack will be cooled as long as it's open. Mm -hmm. More information about core service costs. Um, core service costs can all be asked through sales at teradec.com. Um, or live at teradec.com, and we can give you a pricing matrix uh, on that and tailor something to however you want. Good comment from uh, Raphael, our winner here. If you put a three and a half jack for IFB, please use a lock screw on plug so it can't get pulled off. Yes, yes. We Too late. Middle of. <laughs> On that. <laughs> well, too late for this one. But uh, yeah, on yeah. that note, you know, it's one of those things that happens while on site. Things happen. Things get yanked on, pulled on, dropped off. It's always great to have that extra connection. And we with find that, that the USB you know, actually uh, holds a bit better than the 3.5 and is more ubiquitous these days, especially with USB headsets being Zoom and all of that. Um, yeah. yeah. They're all over the place. All right, everybody, for the uh, 42 of you that are still here, thank you for watching and sticking through all of our blabber and babbling and talking about our cool stuff. But uh, from myself and Tyler, thank you very much uh, for hanging out. If you guys have any other questions, anything further, comments or otherwise, please reach out to us live at teradec.com and uh, ask away. That's why we're here. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. So thank you very much. Have a much. good one, everybody. Thanks for joining.